Good morning. I am Sharon Kielke. I'm the founder and CEO of Jiminy Eco Toys, and I'm here to share my story with you of how I became an environmental activist on a mission to make toys sustainable. My experience setting up a petroplastic free toy store, including the role of bioplastic, and my vision for the future of sustainability in toys. Now, there are three ideas I want you to listen out for during my presentation. The first is that we can plant a billion trees by choosing bio or recycled plastic for toys. Second, is it compostable? You're not supposed to know what I'm talking about at this stage. It will become clear as I tell my story. And third, Barbie loves the ocean. <laughs> so listen out for those ideas. Uh, my life used to look like this. For 13 years, I was a management consultant at McKinsey and Company, working for large organizations on their biggest problems. In 2018, just before my daughter's fourth birthday, I quit. I wanted to do something more personally meaningful. Having a child had woken me up to the environment. I had gotten interest in zero waste and I had worked, started working on reducing plastic in our household. For her fourth birthday, I walked into an art and hobby shop, an Irish toy store, wanting to buy her a gift. I looked for something that was plastic free and locally made. And I left empty handed because everything was made in China and plastic wrapped in plastic. Later that year, the IPCC released its fifth report, which said pretty much the same as their sixth report, which was released a few years, a few weeks ago. It said that in my daughter's lifetime, she will experience drought, famine, mass migration of people, conflict caused by a lack of food, and huge loss of life because of climate change. Unless we stop all of that from happening by drastically reducing our carbon emissions, especially from fossil fuels. Given that 90% of toys are made from petroleum in China and travel 22,000 kilometers to us in Ireland anyway, how many trees do you think we would need to plant to absorb those carbon emissions? Take a guess and write it down. I already told you the answer. It's 1 billion, a billion trees. And that's just for toys, which is not the world's biggest industry. That's before we think about agriculture and all of the other industries. And as a benchmark in 10 years of Ecosia search engine, they have planted a hundred million trees. So we need a century of Ecosia just for toys. That's got to change. And that whole situation made me decide there was nothing more important for me to do than to become an environmental activist. And I decided to focus on toys and to use my business skills to help change that industry in a hands-on way. So I set up a retail and wholesale business called Jiminy Eco Toys. This is me and my friend Suzanne and our kids on a very cold November morning in my local park in 2018. I think we had about 20 products on that table. We had not slept. We did not know what we were doing, but we learned a lot. And the three years since then, we have grown to 750 eco toys defined as being plastic free and made locally in Europe. We also supply shops around Ireland mainly, but also in the UK. And I want to share five things I've learned on this journey so far. First of all, it's not easy. <laughs> in a world where 90% of toys are made in China from petroleum, it's not easy to get plastic free toys. This is our first delivery of our first product, which was a 3D color in cardboard Christmas tree made in the UK. I thought we were, you know, I was delighted with this plastic free product. I did not expect it to show up in three layers of plastic bubble wrap and 20 layers of plastic shrink wrap. Um, now we have 25 questions we ask every supplier before we stock them. And every purchase order includes a very strongly worded 
message not to include any plastic packaging in the shipment before talking to us. I think this power as a purchaser is very interesting as a form of activism because those you know suppliers still seem shocked when we say to them, oh, that product is shrink wrapped. No, we won't stock it then. It's almost as if no one has ever said that to them before. So at worst, we're making someone think. And at best, we have made a few suppliers change their packaging and to work on changing their products. One question I often ask um, or sometimes ask our customers is, which is more urgent, the climate problem to do with plastics or the trash problem to do with plastics? Uh, what do you think they say? They usually pick trash. The narrative in our society around plastic is a lot about waste and pollution and rubbish and trash. Um, but in fact, the climate problem is much more urgent. But this um, difference in understanding sometimes leads to, you know, to interesting conversations with our customers. For example, a cardboard product with shrink wrap on the outside is still mostly really good for the climate because the shrink wrap is a tiny percentage of the weight of the materials used. But uh, we, after two years of stocking no cardboard puzzles because they all came with a plastic bag inside and they all came with shrink wrap on the outside, we compromised and started stocking a brand of puzzles that had no plastic bag inside, but did have shrink wrap outside. And pretty much straight away, the complaints came in. So this is an example of a review that was left by one of our customers. Uh, she said, disappointed, three stars, which is very low for us. Love the puzzle, very disappointed that it came wrapped in plastic, bought it as an eco-friendly gift. In other words, the plastic made it not eco-friendly in her eyes, even though, you know, of the weight, 99.9% .9 of the weight of the product was recycled cardboard. Um, so I think, you know, complaints like this are very encouraging that people have high expectations of us. Um, but sometimes this is, it's quite limiting in terms of the products that we can stock. I want to share a few more uh, common misunderstandings that we encounter. Uh, one is, the next one is about material versus transport. So 90% of the carbon footprint of a toy comes from uh, which of these two? Does it come from the material it's made from or from transporting it 22,000 kilometers from China? Which of those things causes 90% of the carbon footprint? Make a guess and write it down. Is it material or transport? So the correct answer is material, but there's so much conversation about miles, you know, food miles and transport that again, in people's minds, the transport from China is, is the, the biggest part of the carbon footprint of a product. Is it compostable? I mentioned that earlier, and that for me represents a big area of confusion that we encounter with our customers around bioplastics. We often get asked, is this bioplastic truck compostable? It's not, it's made from green PE and we wouldn't want it to be compostable. We wouldn't want your truck to start to biodegrade in sunlight or in water. It's a long lasting durable toy that will last many childhoods of play, but people don't understand that the benefit of bioplastic is its carbon footprint and its renewability. And they somehow associate bioplastic with compostable. In fact, there's a whole confusion around bioplastics because people often see an article a poorly a poorly written article on the internet that makes general statements about bioplastics as if they were all the same the article will say things like bioplastics remove food from the food supply so they compete with people for food which may be true of some bioplastics but it's not true of green pe which is what all our toys are made from there are articles that will say bioplastics can have a larger carbon footprint than petroplastics. Yes, some bioplastics do, but green pea, green PE has a much lower carbon footprint. There are articles saying bioplastics are problematic. They contaminate recycling streams, which is true of PLA water bottles, but it's not true of green PE. <laughs> um, so, you know, you and I know that there is a there are as many bioplastics as there are petroplastics, each with their own carbon footprints and recyclability, but most people don't understand that yet. There is one analogy we often, we often use to explain bioplastics that we find quite helpful, and that's coffee. <laughs> if I gave you two cups of coffee, one fair trade, 
the other made by slaves, would you be able to taste the difference? You would not because they're both coffee. And equally bioplastic, in at least green PE versus petro PE, there is absolutely no difference other than the bioplastic is like the fair trade coffee. You can feel good about it. Um, it's renewable, it's carbon neutral, it's sustainable. Uh, Eco toys is still very niche. Here's a lovely diagram that I borrowed from Game Plan Europe of the toy market in Ireland. 35% is big toy store chains like Smith's and Art and Hobby Shop, 25% independent. And honestly, for us as a eco toy wholesaler, all the demand we see is from the independent stores. Then there's Argos department stores and others. We got very excited to see Smith's Toys stocking Dan Toy Bio, the beach set, and we were really hopeful they would add a second, a second line. They stocked it last year for the summer. They stocked it at the beginning of this summer, and then they discontinued it, which is a bit disheartening. We also saw um, Aldi using Dan Toy Bio as a very low price uh, promotional product, but obviously not stocking it ongoing. So at the moment, I'm afraid eco, eco toys are still a tiny sliver of demand. Now, bioplastic is obviously important, and we do a lot of talking about it, partly to try and counteract the confusion that I mentioned earlier. But what percentage of our revenue as a toy store comes from bioplastic products. Take a guess and write it down. Just 6%, which surprised me how low it was uh, when I calculated this, because I feel like I spend a lot of time talk, <laughs> talking about bioplastic. Um, I was really surprised to see that we sell more products you know, by revenue that are recycled plastic and how much more we sell that are wooden, cardboard, paper, and others. Which types of bioplastics toys are most successful in our eco store? I would summarize as the toys that are the same but better. So toys that people are familiar with, like a truck or a digger or a Lego Duplo compatible block, a toy they already understand. And we all we have to explain is that it's the same but better because it's made from plants, not petroleum. And that clicks, and that works really well. A toy that is new in both functionality and it's bioplastic, like Binabo on the right, um, is all it you know also works, but is is harder because we have two new concepts to explain. We need to explain the toy and why it's fun and how it works, and also explain why it's better because it's made from bioplastic. So that suggests to me the big opportunity for bioplastic is for existing toy makers to change existing popular established toys over from Petro to move them over to bioplastic. We don't like bioplastic for packaging. <laughs> We've tried it. We've tried PLA, cellophane and um, NatureFlex. And NatureFlex is so good. It's such a good quality packaging. The problem is that it confuses the customer. So uh, they, especially in Nature Flex, it's such good quality, the customer can't tell the difference between it and a plastic bag. Most of the um, bioplastic packaging doesn't come with clear marking to say, I am bioplastic, I am home compostable. It just looks like a clear plastic bag. So it ends up in the plastic waste, waste stream. People don't know what to do with it. Um, so we're actually switching, we're phasing it out and switching over to paper, like glassine paper, which is semi-transparent, which people see it and they just know what to do with it. Um, now, time to talk about Barbie and how much she loves the ocean. So why do I have fast fashion on a page with Barbie loves the ocean, which is a special line of Barbie made from recycled ocean plastic, and also Bio Mega Blocks, which is a special line of Mega Blocks made from bioplastic. Well, because the H&M Conscious Collection is a special line of H&M clothing. And, you know, when a fashion producer does a sustainable line, people will often say it's good, good that they're trying, it's good that they're experimenting and learning about sustainability, but why is it just one line? If this corner of the store is conscious, then does that mean the rest of the store is unconscious? And how do we expect 
an eco line of products to prove themselves when they are an unproven, unproven set of designs, totally new designs, why do they need to stand on their own feet just because they're eco? And I feel the same about eco lines like eco Barbie and eco mega blocks. <laughs> uh, why do we expect Barbie Loves the Ocean to be successful in her own right? Why aren't we switching the most popular Barbie over from petroplastic to bioplastic? As an example, I have tried to order Barbie Loves the Ocean and I have tried to order the recycled and bio Mattel product lines, but the UK distributors don't stock them. And one of them told me that the word on the street was the bio and eco lines had not been very successful and were going to be phased out. You know, how did we expect them to be successful when the only thing attractive about them, the, the primary marketing of them was that it, they were eco, when in fact, what most people want is just a Barbie. So why didn't we switch over the most popular Barbie? Probably because of cost, which leads me on to my questions. So I have the following list of questions. If somebody could please figure out the answers and let me know, I'd be very grateful. Uh, is it better to use bioplastic or is it better to use recycled plastic and remove waste from the world? Is there enough agricultural waste to make enough bioplastic if the entire toy industry was to switch over from petroplastic? Is there enough plastic waste in the world to make enough recycled plastic if the entire toy industry was to switch over? And uh, how do we make it so that the bio option is no longer more expensive than the traditional petroplastic? Is it a question of scale? Or is it a question of waiting for governments to remove their subsidies to petroleum? If they did that, would bioplastic become cheaper? Let me know your thoughts. <laughs> What's my vision for a sustainable toy store, let's say 10 years from now? It's this. In case you don't know Smith's, it's the biggest toy retailer in Ireland and the UK. This is what our eco toy store needs to look like, because eco is the only sustainable future for toys or for any, other, any industry. I want you to close your eyes, really. Imagine, you know, think of the biggest toy chain in your country. Picture yourself, it's a Saturday and you need a gift for a little person in your life. You walk into one of these stores and everything on every shelf is made from bioplastic or recycled plastic or wood or cardboard or another natural material. You are carefree in choosing the toy that that child will enjoy the most without worrying about climate or trash or anything. As you pay for the toy you've chosen at the checkout, you smile at the cashier and you feel really proud because you were part of making Eco the new normal for toys. As you leave the store, you call a friend or your partner to tell them how proud you feel. Open your eyes and write down what you say to them. I would be delighted to hear from you after this event. Thank you to Harold and Michael for inviting me to speak. And I'm looking forward to the Q&A later on.